Welcome back, everybody. So continuing our study of computer literacy, which is kind of the forerunner to computer science. So hopefully I haven't been misleading you too much, but a lot of what we're covering right now is the precursor to computer science, or it's the environment in which computer science operates. So with that in mind, let's continue with our study. And we're finishing up our uh, uh, section on digital basics. Um, so without further ado, let's get into how you can efficiently pack or efficiently reorient the data in such a way that it is stored on the computer without taking up too much space. So let's get in some definitions and terminology. Uh, compression, in, in, in particular data compression, uh, is the rearrangement of data with the aim of maintaining a certain level of informational clarity, but with a reduced file size. This is also commonly referred to as zipping. So what does this mean, this uh, difference between data and information? When, If you remember in, in one of our previous videos where we discussed that difference between information and data and how in computer systems it really does uh, make a difference. They are two terms. Information is what humans can understand and data is what machines are um, uh, or what, what is designed for machines to understand and work in. So if you rearrange the data, the machines can still operate on it. The machines can still transport it back and forth, uh, but um, it's it is still main, you're still trying to maintain that uh, human readability factor. So as you see here, commonly referred to as zipping. So if you ever have a file that you have downloaded from the internet and then it asks you to unzip the file, what you have done is downloaded a compressed file. So a file that has been rearranged in such a way that the information is more closely or more tightly packed. Um, and it's also, it has some algorithms um, worked on it to um, make it smaller, okay? Now there are two times there are two types of compression, namely lossless and lossy. So uh, what is lossless? Lossless is a compression with the ability to reconstitute the uncompressed data in the exact form as the original data. So this means that what you put in, you get out. There is no change whatsoever. So whatever packing algorithm, whatever. Um, storing algorithm you've used, when you then perform the reverse of the algorithm, so to speak, then you end up with the exact same data. So this is commonly used for character and numeric data in document files, where, uh, first of all, the information is not um, terribly large, really. Um, it, uh, character and numeric data, although it does take up space, it's not nearly as large as the other categories of data that we will be discussing a little later. So anyway, that is lossless, lossless data. Then we get into lossy. Lossy data is a compression that removes the extraneous data elements with little to no discernible loss in informational clarity. This means that essentially you are skimming off the tops and the bottoms of your data. You're, you're, when you're packing it together, you're also throwing out the information that um, does that uh, just adds weight and doesn't really or takes up space. And when you rebuild that uh, in, uh, that data into the information the uh, viewer will not be able to detect the difference. The uncompressed data will be slightly different from the original. So the original will be what is known as higher, uh, higher clarity or higher bit, you know, uh, it, it, it will take up more data. Uh, this uh, uh, style of compression is typically used in motive, which I, by, by that I mean moving or dynamic, information or graphical information. So you will commonly see this uh, used in sound. So music files, sound files, um, audio files in general. These are going to be compressed uh, using the lossy algorithms, uh, images, and video. All of these will be compressed using 
a lossy algorithm. Uh, the, the compression is accomplished using a compression utility or zip tool. This will be provided for you by the operating system, as is the case with uh, Windows and Mac. You simply right click on the file and it will give you the option of zipping the file. Uh, and then in, uh, in Linux, you, you have some utilities already available to you, but as is often the case, the, uh, uh, the command line utilities are better than the graphical uh, um, uh, utilities. So I'll be demonstrating how to use um, a utility compression uh, tool or a, a compression utility in the terminal. And the process of reconstituting the files is known as extracting or unzipping. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the terminal. And let's see, I have, I'm going to go into my uh, uh, directory called graphics. And I'm going to go in, I'm, first I'm going to remove the uh, my assets dot bz because that's the result of what we're going to be working on um, and let's go into assets go and you see we have these png files so if i want to compress these files so that they take up less space in fact yeah, i can show you ls dash l it shows me how large the files are i believe that's the value on the uh, right in the center, 563, 613, 615, 627, and, six, and 836. So if I want to compress these so that they take up more, uh, they take up less space, say I'm moving them into long-term storage, then I would use a utility known as bzip2, b as in boy, zip2. So for that, I call, we'll go ahead and take a look at the man or the, the help page. So bzip to dash dash help we see that the explanation a block sorting file compressor version 1.08 and i could then show more with the um, uh, man pages but i'm not going to right now but you see we have these various flags that we can use to uh, um, compress the data so we have our help we used we have decompression compression keep Force test, STD out, quiet, verbose, license, version small, um, and then a small, use less memory. And then we can set our block size, and then we can go fast or we can slow. And this is our quality values. Okay, so uh, invoked as bzip2, followed by the file names. So let's go ahead and call bzip2. And I'm going to use the wildcard operator, namely the... the uh, asterisk and i'm going to um, use the bzip utility on all of my png files so i run that and they have now all been compressed so if i run ls l we see the files file locations is it ls l ls l a long there we go and I'm trying to see the file sizes. Hmm. I'm not seeing it at the moment. Maybe I'm just not reading it properly. Oh well, it doesn't matter. They have been compressed, and believe me, they are smaller. The textbook says so. All right. Um, so now the, these files have been compressed, and if I want to uncompress them, I use b unzip, and then hand it the uh, dot bz2 file so b uh, b unzip2 and i want to operate on all files with the file extension of bz2 ls now they have been decompressed okay or uncompressed i believe is the correct word uncompressed all right, so that is how we compress files. That's a compression utility for the terminal. And if I want to compress uh, entire folders, I have to first produce what's known as a tape archive or a tar. So for that, I'm going to CD up one level and we have assets, expats, sure. Yeah, so we have assets here and I'm going to use the tar utility. So tar dash dash help tells us a little bit about tar 
and scroll up here to the header telling us it is uh, tar it is tar saves many files together into a single tape or disk archive and can restore individual files from the archive okay so that's what it is and we are going to um uh, so you see we have the examples here we can use tar and then uh, the flags cf for archive and then we have to give a name dot tar and then uh the uh, create archive uh, archive dot tar from the files foo and bar so in so what we're going to do is we're going to use tar in combination with bzip2 and the flags we're going to use are c for create f for file to archive and then we will also use um what is it we will be using j for bzip2 and then v for verbose which is going to tell us which files we're going to be tarring okay so with that in mind we call tar dash c j v f so create uh, through bzip2 uh, verbose file as archive and we're going to call it my assets dot tar dot b z2 okay so we're going to have two extensions dot tar extension dot bz2 extension and we're going to follow this directory path so we're going to go home nathan Tawning graphics. There we go. And then assets. All right. So you see that we removed the leading um, folder or the directory from member names. And we, now we have successfully, um, we have successfully uh, compressed all of those files and put them in a tar archive. So if I type ls, we see we now have a tape archive of type and it has also been compressed as well. So a tape archive that has been compressed of a directory. And then in order to go in reverse, we simply have to use our tar capabilities with the exception being that we switch out C for X. So X is to create, our C is to create, X is to extract. And then if we take a look here, we see we have this new directory called home. So before you saw, we did not have this directory home. So what it does, what the tape archive does is it creates a file directory that, or a, a directory system that enables you to then, um, it's like recreate the entire directory tree, okay? And then the BZ2 is simply a compression of that tape archive. So if I go into home and Nathan Tawning graphics assets and then follow that up with an LS, you'll see that we have our a, a, a complete copy of our .png files. Excellent. So that is how you work with compression in the Linux terminal. And uh, bzip2 is by no means the only uh, uh, compression utility available to you. It is just one of um, a few. Uh, I think they're like five or six, maybe more. I don't know. Um, uh, different compression utilities that are available. So shop around and find the one that you like. All right. So this has been the conclusion of our digital basics chapter. And in our next video, we will be, uh, either cover or begin to cover how um, sound is stored in the digital in a digital format. Thank you very much for watching, and have a wonderful day. Bye bye.